What is going on, good and beautiful and blessed people? It's the boy Katio, the Warrior Prince, back at it again. And today, 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 today. So today I'm going to react and give my commentary about old Du Bois Watkins. Now, if you was a part of my channel when it was the Reconstruction Project, you know, I did a video on Dr. Boyce Watkins. A while back. <laughs> and I see that Dr. Boyce Watkins is still up to his old tricks. No pun intended. Um, so I seen a video with Dr. Watkins to where he was adding commentary about, I seen some of the video. So a lot of this is going to be fresh. To me, so you're gonna get my real time reactions because I wanted to, um, I wanted to react to this in real time. Um, I tell you, um, you know what? Just without further ado, let me just let me get the video started, um, and then we'll go from there. So let me see how it looks. Um, let me put it like this. Yeah. Hold on. Look at how many women I slept with. Bro, have my bad. That's what I was looking for. Soil screen. All right, <clears throat> here we go. So let me go ahead and get this party started. Let me let me rewind it back a little bit. Lee's talked about me a lot, and typically I don't really address it much, but this time I wanted to address it because I do think that there is something that's happening here that the community needs to pay attention to. So uh, so let's start here. First of all, he says, you know, he's talking about, I guess, some stank asshole, some nasty ass woman who slept with everybody that moves. And he's like, Umar hit it. The homie from the hood hit it. The basketball player hit it. Boyce didn't hit it. We ain't worried about Boyce. Boyce didn't hit it. And I'm like, you're goddamn right Boyce didn't hit it. Boyce don't hang out with low quality. All right. So what Dr. Boyce Watkins is talking about, Anton Daniels, I uh, did a video on, on Instagram and he was being funny. He was being funny. He was talking about a woman in general. He wasn't talking about uh, one particular woman. So uh, Boyce has already taken this thing a little bit too far. I'm going to just speed it up a little bit, though, because I want to get to something. With an STD and kill you. So that's the first thing that I want to kind of address. So, so when he says Boyce didn't hit it, you're damn right. Boyce didn't hit it understand one basic idea uh how many of you have heard this and give me a yes or no how many of you have heard some of the men that talk like that say well we just hold women accountable women need to be held accountable women need to be held accountable has anybody heard that like we we just so women just don't like they just mad because they don't want to be held accountable and i get it i get it there's a lot of women that don't want to be held accountable but one thing about accountability is that accountability starts at home okay <clears throat> now so what Dr. Boyce Watkins is talking about is you have the red pill community. And what the red pill means, it's just really about showing men the reality of what the world really is instead of, you know, this, this lie. Instead of telling you that it's one way and it's really in reality a different way. You know, a lot of men out here think that Women are just these 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 dainty, these innocent creatures. And 95, eight, I say about 90 to 95% of the women out here, man, are, 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 are not. They are the opposite. They will, they're so heartless. They are so savage. They are, it's, it's the culture. Do you understand? It's, it's not just the African-American culture. Because the African-American community is a subsect of the overall American culture. But every time that something starts to happen in America, you might as well say the black community feels it two to three times as worse, right? 
So you got men that are in the red pill space, the black manosphere, you know, they're saying that, look, here's the reality of what women are in this culture, in this society, right? And so most of the men here talk about um, black male agency. That means you have the liberty to do what you choose. They talk about um, having sexual discipline. Don't be out here creating all these babies outside of wedlock. Talks about entrepreneurship. You know, Anton Daniels particularly talks about a man being on his purpose along with angry man. They, they really speak about that stuff. So, but all that you hear that's talked about when you hear other people that are critical of the red pill spaces or in the critical of the black manosphere is that you hear them talking about black women with honest lenses, not with those rose color lenses, not saying, hey, we're going to, you hear them talking about black women for what they actually are, right? And so the black woman in the African-American community has never actually been up under that much scrutiny or never really been held accountable before. So what you hear at a lot of pro-blacks and what you hear in a lot of these, you know, because, you know, the women are black community is a matriarchy. What you really hear is that no matter what happens in the African-American community, it's the black man's fault. So. When you hear the counter to that, finally, because you're talking about 50, 60 years of black women being just. You know, able to say whatever they want to say with no dissenting opinion against it. Now it's, oh, you're complaining, you're complaining, you're complaining. If you say something about me and I give a rebuttal, that's not a complaint. That's a rebuttal. Now, in order for you to be able to uh, uh, win the argument is you have to have a better rebuttal. You have to have a better argument. Insulting me by saying that I don't, I'm just complaining that's not a very good rebuttal. Accountability starts at home, brother. So if you can't hold yourself accountable, how the fuck are you going to hold women accountable? Well, the truth is <laughs> most men do most men not only do most men hold themselves accountable, but the world at large, the the the, the community, the society at large holds men accountable. You don't believe me? Check the family court laws. OK, child support ain't supposed to just be automatic, but child support is automatic in this country. If a woman brings a child support civil suit against a man, that man is going to pay child support. At that point, it just de depends on how much he's going to pay. But he's going to pay child support. And child support. You know, you got I got my opinion about child support, you know, but it's what it was supposed to be in theory was when the two parents could not agree on how much income was going to be set aside so that the child's needs were met. So you go and you get the court system involved and the court says, based off your income and based off her income, here's how much money should be set aside and based off visitation. But go to the child support court Right now, let's just say that you were dating a girl and you got her pregnant, right? And y'all had a baby. And let's just say she's living with you. And while she's living with you, you're taking care of X, Y, and Z. This is the scenario. You're taking care of everything. Everything that the child needs, you're paying rent, you're paying car payments, you're doing all of these things. And when you, But when you go to child support court, Here's what they're going to say to you. Appreciate you for doing that, pimp. But that was a gift. And I've, I've seen cases where dudes have had to pay upwards of twenty to $30,000 in back support. 
in arrears because the woman was able to say that man didn't help me at all. So a lot of these men out here, they don't know that the court system is this way. They have no idea. Remember, 51% of all black men in America don't have kids. They're single and a childless. 51%. 51% is majority. These are the stats. 51% of all black men are single and childless. Okay, about 28 to 30% are married with their children. So that leaves what? About 10%? About, about what? Let's just say 20% of men that are having babies outside of wedlock. And of that 20%, how many are abandoning their children? So even if we just say, let's say hypothetically, 20% of all black men are uh, 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 in America are abandoning their children, that's still eight out of 10 that are there with their kids. I mean, that's still, that's still either, I'm sorry, that's 80% that are either without a child or are married to the mother of their children. But I digress. Yo, seriously, you, you, you will, if you watch their videos carefully, you will hear them talk extensively about how many kids a woman has how many women a woman has slept with or how many men has slept with, what a woman is doing with her life and the status of her situation. But not one single time do you hear them challenging men in the same way. Never once do you, do you even make a basic conclusion. You don't understand the basic idea that do you, do you do understand that whenever there's a single mother, there's a man that made that baby. Okay. And let's talk about that. That's true. However, most single mother created by the same guy. So you have six, seven single mothers being created by one person. So we can sit here and talk about um, the 2% of men that are doing that or the 20% of men or, or however the low percentage is. But 70 some odd percent of all black children are born out of to out of wedlock. So we could talk about the 20 versus the 70, the 70, the 77, or whatever it is. We can discuss that. But it would seem to me, because I have a different theory on how to solve this problem. I really do. It would seem to me that instead of one man being able to do all this damage, we will try to hold the majority accountable. It's the women, boys. It's the women. So when you hear these guys talking about these women having 78 kids, they're talking about this in context. You can't take what they're saying out of context. They're just not saying, oh, black women is boom, 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 boom. That's not what they're saying. They're saying, hey, these are the type of women that you stay away from because they have a certain mentality. But let me stop stopping it so much. How often do you hear these men who attack the women say anything about these motherfuckers that are making kids and abandoning their children. The same guy who created five single mothers will literally be in the chat saying, Oh, he admits it. So he's saying the one guy created five single mothers, but we can't hold the five single mothers accountable. It's the man's fault for creating five single mothers. Not to mention you shouldn't be even having sex outside of wedlock anyway, but let's talk about the fact that, Where's your father? Where's your father? Where's your father in helping decide the man that's going to marry you? But I let me that's a different topic. That's why I don't date no single mothers. I ain't date no single. So you run around infecting women, infecting them with, with unwanted pregnancies. Infecting. <laughs> infecting. That's a that's a crazy word to choose. Infecting, but okay. Infecting them with STDs. And so he equated a pregnancy with an STD. Okay. Then you're talking shit about the very same women that you infected. Brother, something's wrong with you. You, you don't understand the accountability equation. That sense. I'm going to tell you why you're supposed to hold the women more accountable in this situation. And I come from a biblical perspective when I do this, but the woman is the one that can only consent and give him access. She has to consent. She's literally the gatekeeper of her womb. I don't give a care how much a man can talk. He can be silver tongue. He can be Barack Obama when it comes to chirping in somebody's ear. 
she still has to give him access. She has to say, you know what? Come get this lightning. Come, 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 come get this lightning. But however, <laughs> and then on top of all that, how many different forms of birth control is it out here? And then if the woman gets pregnant, she can opt to abort the baby or she can just put the baby up for adoption. There is literally no reason why in today's society that a black woman should be a single mother. Unless, unless, and I don't even count them as single mothers, unless she's widowed. Unless she's widowed or unless the man ran out and abandoned his family. Then that woman, I mean, what, what can she do? You know, it's so so again, some some people, right? I think that the people who made good choices in their lives and put themselves in a good situation, uh, they haven't uh, devalued themselves by just spreading themselves, their bodies all over the place. They get walking around with all kinds of diseases and and financial problems, everything else that comes with that. People like that, you should find somebody that matches that, right? You have the right to say, well, because I didn't have any kids and I'm I'm my credit is good and my income is high and I've taken care of my body. I want somebody who does the same thing. I get that. But a lot of these guys are losers. <laughs> they are not. They are not. You, you're you not going to find too many men in the red pill space that are quote unquote losers. They are not. I'm just being frank with you. They are not. Most of these, these guys in the red pill space, they're either married or they don't with kids and they don't have kids. Or they don't been through something and they remarried or whatever. They are not losers. When you say a lot, see, this is the problem. This is, this is, this is really the problem in the black community. And this is the problem with America at large and the Western society at large when it comes to dealing with black men. You have all of this propaganda that is against black men. You have this machine that is always saying most black men or a lot of black men or majority of black men. And when you sit down and you actually do the numbers and you go through the CDC websites and you go through blackdemographics.com and you see all these the, the numbers, you come to understand that, man, that many, but a handful of guys that's actually doing this. So you're telling me it's about roughly 14 to 15 million Black men in America. Now, of, of those 14 and 15, of those 14 to 15 million black men in America, half of that don't have kids. 51% of that don't have. So we immediately take out seven million, seven to eight million. How do you want to like seven to seven and a half million? They're just gone. Take them out. Okay. From that, from there, okay, we have to then take out another 30%. Because they're married and they're married with the children that they're supposed to be with. So out of that 15%, I mean, out of that 15, 14 to 15 million, we immediately have removed about 80% 80 of those. So that's leaving us with what, 2 million? So let's just say hypothetically, 2 million black men are infecting. How many black women are in the country? It's about another, what, 50? It's, it's like... Another million and a half of black women is a black man. So you got out of those, two million of the black men are affecting, uh, oh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> are impregnating and affecting 70 something percent of those women. So what's 70 percent of, 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 of 14 million? About roughly what? Mm, I want to say 10 million. So you got two to 10. Two million are messing with 10 million. It's probably a bit, but let's say about 12 million. Two million are affecting 12 million. Who is the problem? Who's the problem? I digress. <laughs> these dudes not all of them not all of them i don't know much about anton and his situation i'm sure he's made some money on youtube and all that 
but I now I don't know. I think I when I understand, I think his mother was a single mother for a while. I, I think his father might have died. My heart, I give my condolences. Now, how you call that woman a single mother? She's a widow. There's a name for it, boys. His widow. Condolences for that, but but if your mama was out here as a single mother and dealing with guys like you telling other men that single mothers are not worth their time. I don't know how you would feel about that. You know, why do we always use this argument? Why do they always use the argument in black America when we are talking about um, holding black women accountable? Why do we always say your mama's a black woman? Like our mothers are above reproach. Let me, let me change the screen for a second. Let me, let me pull myself up. Why do we say that? Like, like our mothers are somehow above reproach. Like, because we came from the womb of a black woman, like any of us, like any of us had an option to be here. Why do we in turn say, oh, well, you know, your mother, your mother was a single mother. So would you want your mama to be single? I would want my mother to be accountable for her actions that she's taken. Yes, I definitely want my mother to be accountable for the action that she's taken. Most definitely. I don't know. Again, I don't know the situation with his uh, mother. I think he I could have sworn he mentioned something about his father passing. His mother was a single mother. And uh, and I think that that would be very unfortunate for somebody to have judged his mother the way he's judging other people's mothers. Right. And you know, I'll be wondering how sometimes people get to an age that they get and not even utilizing common sense. I think boys, I think boys is pandering. I think boys is smart. I think boys at this point is just pandering. I think he's pandering to women. I think I think that's what boys is doing. I, I'm, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say I think he's pandering because there's no way in the world that you can't see the difference between a woman who got married and became a widow later in life versus a woman as I hear thought pocketing it up. And the thing that I think as black people, we have to understand is that YouTube entertainment is it's entertainment and it's, it's sometimes it's hurtful entertainment. And because you have such a traumatized community, you have people that build their whole platforms by being as outrageous, as clownish, and as hurtful as they can possibly be. Why can't you build a platform? Who did that? I remember St. G used to do it. All these black women built their platforms off destroying black men. But for the most part, these black men, look. Angry man, shout out to angry man. Angry man covers a wide variety of topics on his show. From politics to business, to relationships, to fatherhood. The same with Anton. Anton covers a lot on his show. Like, it's like a wide spectrum. Like, there, you got to understand, their audience is a, is a mixture of, uh, of male and female. Okay, but. What about what about uh what about the Crimson Cure? Her whole platform is 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 designed to reconstruct the black woman's mind. And in doing that, she is critical of the behavior of black women. So you can criticize, listen, you can critique the behavior. When did people when do we become above reproach? When did we become a a a a, a society? To where we can't criticize you. We can't say, hey, that is wrong what you're doing. We need to bring back shame. That's what we need to do. We need to, I need to make me some t-shirts say, hey, let's bring back shame. Because I really do believe if shame was still around and shame was like on the doorstep like it used to be, people wouldn't open their mouth and say some of the dumb stuff that they say. Boys included. We need to really bring back. I'm only 11, 11 minutes into the video, and I'm going to skip forward. And but Boyce is already on the foolery. Lying. First of all, it is entertainment. People are on YouTube to get paid. 
People are on YouTube to get hurt. People are on TikTok to get paid and get hurt. People are doing that stuff. You're right, boys. But it's so funny to me that everybody gets to profit off the foolery of black women. Everybody gets to prosper off the fact that black women don't love themselves. Everybody gets to proper, uh, prosper off the fact that black women think that they're ugly. I've never seen this BBL <laughs> uh, little craze is just retarded to me or silly to me because black women naturally have big butts. You mean to tell me y'all going to let the, 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 the Spanish people uh, package it and resell it to your Brazilian butt lift? So you gonna let them re repackage it and sell it back to you for a higher rate when you're naturally built like that? It's the silliest thing that I've ever heard. But it, you got all kind of Asian uh, hair product stores and stuff like that within the African-American community because black women don't love themselves. Black women have been told and have been convinced that their hair is ugly. You got people even bleaching themselves because they've been told that their rich, dark chocolate skin is bad somehow. But when a black man builds a platform off of holding men accountable and holding the women accountable, he's bad because all of a sudden he's holding women accountable and that's a bad thing. Not uh, calling them out their names, not bees, not hoes, not none of this, not trying to sell them a product, but simply saying, y'all need to act better. That's bad. Platform by empowering black men. Why can't you build a platform by empowering black families? Why can't you build platforms by saying positive things that, that's going to elevate people? When you're empowering people, boys, you do realize a part of that empowerment is making them aware of what to be on the lookout for, making them aware of what things to avoid. And making them aware to be able to distinguish what is good for them and not good for them. You're in business, boys. We know about bad investments and good investments. We know about uh, uh, assets and things that things that have um, uh, that gain equity versus things that depreciate. We know about how um, you know it's low. You want to ideally want to have low risk and high reward. So when you got black men on their platforms teaching other black men when it comes to relationships, these characteristics of these particular women, they are high risk. And now all of a sudden it's bad. Why must the platform be built by, by being one of the few groups of people on the planet? The black men, we're, the, we're, we're identified with this. The African-American male is one of the few people on the planet that is known for bashing the shit cap. Oh. <laughs> I can't with you. <laughs> black men? Black men bash their women? The same group of men that are notorious for marrying a woman that got four, five, six, seven, eight kids. The same group of men that the woman can be big as a got on school bus and they still marry them? Boys. Ooh, boys, you're pandering, boys. Come on, boys. Come on, bro. Come on. Apparently, you don't know the ways of the force. I digress. Out of their women, like literally just going ham in terms of disrespecting black women at every turn, uh, you know, saying that because you have a single mother, you uh, or because you are a single mother, something's wrong with you. And, uh, and I think that's a generalization, boys. You know, they're not I'm, I'm, you, you know, they're not saying that because you're a single mother, there's something wrong with you. But we're talking about a mindset. Of choosing to become a mother prior to becoming a wife. Let me, let me skip forward. Cause I've been here all day messing with boys. You don't need to come around no more because the problem was he was coming in and out, ducking in and out, breaking my mother's heart, not holding up his responsibility hold on, hold on. I'm or whatever. Something. And he, he came. 
I, I love black women, but I know black women ain't perfect. Oh, but I also know check. that my mother was a single mother, and I know that my father, my mother was a single mother because my daddy was a drug addict. It was the man's fault that my mother was raising me by herself when I was two or three. It wasn't her fault. It wasn't because she was a whore and a woman. wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me let me back that up. Let me back that up. I don't understand your platform. I really don't. I don't understand where the win is. I don't see here's the thing that I will tell you. I, I love black women, but I know black women ain't perfect. But I also know that my mother was a single mother. Mm -hmm. And I know that my father, my mother was a single mother because my daddy was a drug addict. Okay. It was the man's fault that my mother was raising me by herself when I was two or three. It wasn't her fault. It wasn't because she was a whore. Okay. I got a couple of things to say about that. And I'm going to skip forward. First of all, it was your mother's fault. Okay. This is what we're talking about. The lack of accountability. First of all, it was your mother's fault because she gave him access to her womb prior to becoming a wife. Secondly, I might ask, what was your grandfather? Where was he at? And why wasn't he able to say, hey, no, not him, baby, but him? It seems like to me, this guy seemed like he already, your, your whatever biological father already had a drug problem. And yet her knowing this still chose to open her legs and conceive you with him. That's her fault, boys. That is a choice that she made. She chose to lay down and get a baby by a drug addict. She ain't a victim, boys. Mommy, I'm sorry, bro. Mom Dukes ain't a victim, man. I'm sorry. She wasn't a victim, bro. I'm sorry. It, it, it is what it is. And I'm not talking about your mom. I'm just responding to what you're saying. Your mother was not a victim. Your mother opened her legs to somebody whom obviously wasn't ready to be i mean how can you depend on a drug addict to be the pillar of stability and a worthless piece of shit my mother was raising me by herself because she was the fucking person that took responsibility she was the one that took responsibility she's supposed to take responsibility she opened up her legs boys well my daddy my biological father was off getting high so a lot of these run off and get high Negroes are the very same ones who are hiding under this cloak of accountability. I call it the cloak of accountability, the disguise. They, they, they really need to come out the closet. They need to come out the closet because they're hiding under this, this, this cloak of accountability where we hold women accountable. And these are guys that are just like my biological father who was so busy getting high that he didn't take care of his son. He created a... That's a bad choice that your mother made, boys. That is a bad decision that your mother made. You want to be honest? That was a horrible decision that your mother made. It was. So then it sounds like you got daddy issues, pimp. It sounds like you got issues with your father. So when you got these men out here critiquing the behavior of women, you're taking an issue with it because your mother was a single mother. Let me skip forward. Let me let me get let me skip forward to what him the Anton debate because I'll be sitting here all day. And we can talk it out. This is something new. This is something rare. We don't really do that much on this channel. All right. So let's see here. Um, I actually really like you boys. You give good financial advice, but you're wrong about dating in black relationships. Okay, it's your right to think that. I agree. Boy, it's always I'm wrong. Asking you what's the solution? That's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for people that. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna keep letting the video play. The men are telling you the solution. They're literally giving you the answer. You literally got the cheat sheet. You got the teacher's answers right there. The men are giving you the answers. You just reject the solution. Passport bros come out and say, hey, let's import the women. Right? You say something about that. Oh, they can't get women over here. They're going to different countries to trick off. The men that are staying here are saying, hey. This is how you choose the women from here. Oh, y'all crit criticizing women. The men are giving you the solution. Too very practical when they're very pragmatic in their approach. Either bring somebody else in that got a different upbringing or different, um, different culture. Or if you're going to date somebody from here, 
Here is how you weed out the bad ones from the good ones. That's the solution. That is how you build an adequate, a great community, boys. Isn't it called natural selection? The strong survives. The, the one with the best genes to adapt to the environment survives. So the environment now is that the men are saying, hey, no more. Stepdaddy season over. We don't did that. We ain't doing that no more. We're not doing that anymore. So if a woman wants to be chosen as a wife, she going to have to put on a bridal garment. She going to have to become that thing that the man is searching for. That can keep identifying the problem. I'm a mathematician. We solve problems. We don't just complain about them. So it looks like Anton's you no know, good mathematician. I'll tell you, <laughs> you're not very good, boys. You're not very good. You're getting the right answer. I mean, like, nah, that, that ain't. <sighs> I know two plus two. That, nah, that shouldn't equal four. That's what you're doing, boys. In here. So, Anton, I'm, I'm going to bring you in. So, uh, here we go. So, everybody, welcome, Anton. And let's treat him with respect. Let's hear what the brother has to say. Hey, brother, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing well. How you doing? Doing good, doing good. Uh, so welcome to the channel. It's good good to finally meet you in person. So uh, I assume that you have some things to say. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just be quiet and, and give you the floor. Well first, well, first and foremost, let me say I appreciate you uh, for letting me come on a platform and even being able to have this conversation because I think it's important uh, because we just fundamentally disagree on a lot of different things. Um, first, let me say that I remember all of the times where you were throwing shots, voice. You threw a lot of shots in a lot of the different red pill content spaces. Uh, you throw comments inside of Instagram posts that's, that's specifically referencing me on videos that they repost to me. You say you throw at him hominem attacks like, oh, man, he must be cross eyed or stuff like that. You do that, boys. And that's cool. I don't have any problems with that because it's cool. We all content creators and people are going to get shots. But then you can't complain on the other side when people reference you because you always play a victim or you always trying to act like you don't understand why people have a problem with you. It's because you do things like that. But then you want to sit here and posture and say, well, we should all talk like men. You started. It. Mm. You absolutely started it. And so when other people start to get shine or when other people's message start to resonate with other men, then you throw shots instead of having a conversation with them. So I I appreciate you for even allowing for me to come on a platform and have this conversation in the first place, because I think that, you know, you need to check that. You do a lot of that when you talk about empowerment, but you always throw shots at different content creators. But then when it's time to have a conversation in the past, you say, well, I'm not paying attention to it. I don't really reference it. Mm -hmm. It's not a big deal. I think that that's 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 not right. That's mm -hmm. not right, boys. And then you wonder no, why I, people. You actually made. Go ahead. I'm you sorry. made a great point. You, you, no, no, you really exposed me with that because I, you're, you're right. Sometimes, uh, I go in the land of petty. Like I think, for example, uh, and it, it, it really is, it is a type of hypocrisy that that I've always had to confront because I don't think it's going in the land of petty. I think it's cowardness, right? I think it's 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 the same thing that women do. Women try to play the victim. Now, Anton Daniels has a great channel. Um, Anton gives some great advice. Anton is a businessman. Anton is a family man. He's going to explain all that, hopefully. Um, but I don't always agree with Anton. There's a lot of things I don't agree with Anton about. I don't. But I always respect what Anton has to say, whether I agree or not. See how he just came into... Boys' channel and paid okay, paid his respects, and then he just said what he had to say. He's standing on ten toes down. That's Anton. He doesn't run. He doesn't back down. He don't cower down for nothing. The dude is a stand-up guy, right? He's open and he's honest, and he's always able to articulate his thoughts very well. You know what I mean? And so, men are going to disagree about things. Men are not always. We're not a monolith. We know this, right? So. This is how we as men, we tend to do. But me and Anton got far more in common than I would say that we don't have in common. Me and boys ain't got a whole lot in common at all. 
I mean, he says he loved the black community, but you can't have a community without the goddamn on men. It's like uh, I had, and you're not the first person I've had that kind of disagreement with. Kwame Brown really had a problem. I mean, this dude made 12 videos or something in a row about me. I didn't watch any of them. So there, that part about ignoring it, I really do ignore it because I want to focus. But but if you really look at it, I said his name first instead of, you know, and I now I wasn't trying to insult him, but I said his name. He got offended. And that was the reaction. So you could be right. I, I, I've been accused of being a provocateur before. Um, and so uh, so first off, uh, I, I want to acknowledge that and uh, even apologize. Uh, but this no, second, I, I, don't, I don't think it warrants an apology because we are content creators. The only thing that I that I'm saying is, you know, if you dish it out, you just got to be willing to take it back. I say a lot of things because other people are content creators. And so I'm going to critique their their position on different subjects. Um, and then I, I notice that they get offended. But people say stuff about I'm not tripping about it. It's just a part of the game. I understand that that's what comes with, with the territory. So I, I don't have any problem with you doing it. I just don't want you to be be a victim. That's all. I'm mm, OK. OK. That makes sense. Well, you know, I, I don't see myself as a victim. I, I, I understand what you're coming yeah, from but with you that. Played I, mean, a victim, I don't no boys. look at it as like, what was me? I think it's more so I'm thinking more so about the. The fact that it seems to me that we can't have this conversation about dating and relationships without it somehow sounding like we're getting clicks and views by bashing black women. You know, and I know that it's not all women and I get it, but I don't see the same level of accountability being pushed toward the men as the women. And I believe it's because the men are the ones that are promoting the content and, and giving. the Well, for starters, black women have been had for so long to just tell their side. Now it's the men turn to just the men are just telling their side of the story. Why is that a problem? It's not like somebody took the microphone out the women's hands. They still got the mic. It, <laughs> it's so funny to me because it's like black men are bashing black women, but we have how many countless talk shows where black men have been bashed and no one gave them the mic. So now both people got the mic and black men are just putting up a more co um, coherent argument. And not only that, I mean, we're in the age of social media. The internet, <laughs> the internet has done the same thing that the airplane done. It's just kind of made us made it a smaller world. I mean, there's no other way around it, right? Um, so people can actually peer into your life. I know Nigerians because I'm married to one. I know Nigerians now that tell me more about what be going on in the U S than I know, because I really don't, they're a low, I mean, um, national politics I vaguely pay attention to it if it's not affecting the global stage. Just being honest. But I have Nigerians that ask me questions now about what's going on in America. I had somebody ask me about a law in Kentucky that got passed um, recently. Matter of fact, it got passed today. They asked me about a child support law. They knew about it. They knew about it in a different country. So the internet has just made the world smaller. And so it's not only black men that see the behavior that black women do. Everybody else is watching now, boys. Everybody else is watching. This is why you have almost an epidemic of other women coming pillaging black men. This is why with the passport bros, you had the Filipinos and the, uh, and the other races of women coming at black women because black women was attacking them for black men going overseas to pursue love. And that was criticized. They said they was tricking out. Let me tell you something about sex tourism. I was in the military from 2000 to 2005. That's been a thing. And black men didn't invent it. They didn't. Sorry to say this. But here's what I will say that's unique to black men. 
when we leave the United States of America and when we go to other places, particularly places in Africa, in Asia, in South America, we're not treated as though we are a pariah. We are treated the way that men are supposed to be treated. See, this is something that people don't understand. Something I was explaining to my son the other day. Uh, my son was telling me about a situation to where a teacher messed with a younger girl. And my son actually happened to like the girl. And he, in his mind, I told him, I said, hey, look, man, the dude shouldn't be messing with an underage girl and all that, yada, yada, yada. But he couldn't understand why the girl was attracted to him. And I had to break it down to him. And I said, look, the reason why younger women find older men attractive is you meet each other at, an, at a certain point, at an, I'm going to say a crossroads. I don't want to use the word the term crossroads, it's a bad term. Let me say you meet each other in your primes. A younger woman, say, say 21, 22, 23 years old, sees entering into her prime. An older man between 35 and 40 some years old, he's now starting to enter into his earnings potential prime. Right? Entering into it. Don't really cap out until about 50, but he's starting to enter into it. Right. As men get older and we earn more and we're able to be more stable and more secure. We become more attractive to women. 